Greetings. Today I want to speak to you on the subject of take up thy bed and walk. And I want to show you how it is actually an active parable. And it must be understood metaphysically. But before you can understand it metaphysically, you have to accept the fact that you are a mental being, a, a psychological being, a spiritual being, and also a physical being. So if you understand your physical self, your psychological self, and your spiritual self, then you'll have a better understanding of the explanation that I would give to you. You see, the entire Bible itself is a parable. And everything being hidden in a parabolic way. But very few people understand it because many people do not know anything at all concerning the law of mentalism, especially religious people. So when you realize that this parable is all about the potential that lies within you, the greatness that lies within you, and you are fast asleep on this potential, this great potential that is in you. And it is teaching you how to activate that potential by coming into contact with your Christ self, your higher self. And it is teaching you that when you find your Christ self, your Christ self will point you to go in to your house. And it will say to you, take up thy couch, take up thy bed, and learn to walk, learn to think for yourself, learn to stand on your own, your two own, or your own two feet, I should say. It's going to teach you wholeness. So I'm teaching you concerning wholesomeness, how to be whole. And to be whole, you have to know, first of all, who you are. And the reason for that is because you cannot love and accept yourself if you do not know who you are. So my brother and my sisters, I want to take my time and teach you this parable. And I want to go into the Bible and read it for you. Okay? And I would encourage you to read it from this Bible. Okay? Because it's all about you discovering your magical self. Okay, and this Bible, the 66 books of magic, which is the Overcomers Bible, in this Bible, Jesus has been omitted, and there's a blank space for you to write your name, which is I am. But you can never say I am and not referring to yourself. It's all about you discovering who you are and using your power to achieve your every desire. And it is teaching you to get rid of the crutch that you've been depending upon. Telling yourself a lie. Telling yourself that you cannot do the things that you're born in this world to do. And it's teaching you that where there is a will, there is a way. Well, the good news is that you're born in this world with your will, your perception. You're born with your reasoning. You're born with your memory. You're born with your intuition. You're born with, with, with your imagination. Okay? So you're born with all of these mental faculties, but you're denying all of these mental faculties because you haven't found your Christ consciousness. You haven't found your Christ self. And so it's going to teach you that all the distractions, which are the scribes and the Pharisees, when you stop listening to the distractions, of the religious superstitious agenda that they want to cultivate in you. When you get rid of all of that, you will definitely find the place where the Christ is. And you will be able to get rid of your negative thinking. And you will stand strong on the positive thinking. And your life will become more valuable to the rest of humanity. And that is the main lesson that it is teaching you there, metaphysically. But let me just say this also. 
you have to realize that the Bible is not literal. Neither is it secular history. You must realize that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. It has no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that would have taken place on earth thousands of years ago. So everything you're reading in the Bible, it all has to do with the mind. That's why you're told, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you're also told that whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, you must think on these things because it's all mental. It's all psychological. It's all a great psychological jammer. And that is why if you understand this parable of how to take up your couch or your bed and walk, you would realize that many, 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 many people are, have fallen asleep on their greatness, their potential, and they are living a rather impotent life, being mentally sick. Because before you can even be physically sick, everything starts in the mind. Everything is mental. So it is teaching you here of a mental sickness, a mental condition. And you need to come into the presence of your Christ self to heal this mental condition. So when you speak about the palsy, it is not a physical sickness. It is just symbolic. So the Bible has been written in a symbolic language. And so I'm showing you, when you understand the symbology, by understanding the Bible, first of all, metaphysically and esoterically and understand it psychologically, and realize that it all has to do with the human psyche, then you will understand why many people are taking psychological sickness for physical sickness. Everything starts within, and that's what most religious people are missing. Okay? Because as I said earlier, they lack the understanding of the law of mentalism, that everything was false a thought, everything was false an idea, everything was false imagining. Okay? And a word is a thought expressed. Action is the expression also of a thought. So if you miss the love mentalism, you're living your life like a living dead. You're living your life being delusional. Okay? You're living in total darkness. That is why I'm bringing this message to you to bring the light to you. Okay? And that's why I'm encouraging you to get this Bible. Okay? It is for the overcomers. It's not for everyone. Okay? Now, I'm going to read from Luke chapter 5, okay, and I think I'll take it from verse 17. Now, in my Bible, it is page 460 because my New Testament doesn't start with, you know, Matthew. It starts with John because John represents love, okay? So it starts with love, and that's why you have to start with love, by loving yourself. Self-love is the most powerful thing, okay? So you have to start by loving yourself and believing in yourself, okay? And that's what John really represents. So you say here, and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every tongue of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. Now, you have to understand here, all these places that seem to be geographical places, they are psychological places of mind. They are places in consciousness where you can dwell, okay, because as I said before, all is mine, and here it is saying that the scribes and Pharisees and the doctors of the, of the law sitting by, they are actually present, so in your mind are the positive thinking, are the positive thoughts, and also the negative thoughts that wants to keep you limited, that wants to keep you in the ego state of mind so scribes and pharisees just represent your religious superstitious and negative mentality that is filled with doubt and fear and guilt and shame and all of these things gonna burden you down and keep you crippled and keep you sick not just physically but first of all mentally spiritually emotionally, socially, and then physically, okay? But it says here, 
And the power of the Lord, which is your I am, let's say higher self, was present to heal them. You see, the healing power is always present to heal, but you have to have an open mind. Okay? So it's always present. It is not a man 2,000 years ago it is speaking about. It is speaking about the creative, imaginative power that is within you that you can use to achieve your every desire. That's why you are told that without him was not anything made that was made and that all things was made by him. Name me one thing that was made in this world that wasn't first imagined. I wasn't first a thought. I wasn't first an idea. And whatever word you would say to me, wasn't it first a thought or first an idea? Didn't, it, didn't you first cultivate it in your mind? So, this truth can never be proven wrong. 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy. This is showing you that they would always have the sick among you who are mentally diseased. Those who cannot think for themselves. Those who get trapped in the matrix and they have become wandering souls on the planet. And we have to help them. Okay? So they will be able to see the light. And they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. You see, in life, we are trying our best to get people to see the truth. And even until 2020 and COVID and what would have taken place, yet many people still haven't wake up. Many people still haven't seen the truth. That's why many of them were willing to give their shoulder to be inoculated. Because why? They owe the banks and they have become slaves and they have developed slave minds. Yet the Bible in Proverbs 22 tells you that the rich rule it over the poor and that the borrower is a slave to the lender. And so if you want to be the lender, not the borrower, of course you have to understand the Bible metaphysically. Of course you have to understand the power of the inner sun that is within you. And you start looking to an outer S-O-N. You would realize that the S-U-N is actually the light of the world. You understand? And you would also realize that the sun parallels the human imagination. The human imagination parallels the sun. For without the sun, there's no life and there's no light. And without the human imagination, there isn't anything made that was made. Okay? So... It says, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. So we are trying our best to get people to understand the law of mentalism. We are trying our best to get people to understand that the Bible, the entire Bible is a parable. We are trying our best to get them to understand it from a metaphysical and esoteric standpoint. But it is very hard because how many have been programmed from since they were small. Okay, 19. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude. They went before the horse stop. They went upon the horse stop, I should say. Okay, they went upon the horse stop. It is showing you that when you are looking for a way because you have a will and you want to find your Christ self, you want to find the phenomena of life. That you will look everywhere, but not until you find the house top, which is the highest place of consciousness. You see, the house and the top of the house is ours above. It. This is what it is speaking about. When you find here, when you find the invisible commander in the command center, which is above, and you realize heaven is above and, and hell is down below. And when you understand also, that heaven is above and the earth is below. And you start to live from here instead of living just from here. Go down. Then you start to understand what I'm speaking about. Okay? And you say, And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the horse top and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst into the midst before I am. So when you come to the understanding of the law of consciousness and you accept your I amness, 
which means you accept that your real identity is your divinity and you're willing to look inwardly. It is saying that you're going to start from here all the way down. Okay? In other words, you have to live from inside out, not from outside in. So this is where it is teaching you. But it is parabolic, as I said before. It is symbolic. It says here, and when he saw their faith, it is saying here now that when your subconscious mind is impressed with the feeling that your wish is already fulfilled because you're operating in faith, you're trusting the invisible, you're remaining loyal to the invisible because you have a will and you know there is a way. You say, it is saying here that there would be conversation. There would be a dialogue. And you will find the answer. Then he say here, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. You see, sin here is speaking about missing the mark. And when you are sleeping on your potential, your greatness... And you're not living the best version of yourself on this planet. You're sinning. But when you find your Christ self, you will be able to forgive yourself. That's why you'll be able to love yourself and accept yourself and move on from there. Okay? And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? You see, when you find your God self, the religious, superstitious thoughts or beliefs, they're going to battle you. They're going to tell you, no, you shouldn't question anything. They're going to tell you, you should just believe everything that the system gives to you. They will tell you that it is blasphemy. So, my brother and my sisters, whenever you seek to know who you are, you have to realize that you will come in contact with the scribes and Pharisees, which are your negative, limited, religious, superstitious thoughts that was given to you since you were a child. And you have to break that old programming by, be, by being willing to unlearn, relearn, and reprogram your subconscious mind. Okay? So, then it says here in verses 22, But when I am perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your heart? You would realize that everything comes from the heart. And you would realize that the heart is speaking of the subconscious mind. And it is all about thoughts. So, this is not a man outside of himself that is reading your mind. No, this is showing you here that you would realize that everything is mental and everything is psychological. You, you would have a better perception of yourself. You would realize that you are the perceiver beholding the perception and you will have a better perception of yourself when you come in contact with your Christ consciousness. He, said, he say, says here, whether it is easier to say thy sin be forgiven thee or to rise up and walk isn't it easier to first find yourself and forgive yourself rather than to go after the things of this world first? That is a question that everyone must ask themselves because when the religious and superstitious minds try to attack your open-mindedness and you thinking for yourself you would ask them if it isn't better for you to love yourself and believe yourself and embrace yourself first more than you giving reverence to someone outside of yourself you see many people looking for miracles outside of themselves but here it is teaching the greatest miracle is found within yourself by when when you learn to forgive yourself when you realize that you're the cause of everything in your life the sin of you come shouting and missing the mark of your greatness 
So my brothers and my sisters, you are the cause of everything in your life. Okay, let me come down here so uh, 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 as I come in close to a close. He said, but that ye may know that the Son of Man, which you are actually the Son of Man, had power upon earth to forgive sins. Your mind controls your body. You have power over your body. You have power over your circumstances. That's why he's teaching you here. He said, unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thy house. You see, it is teaching you that you have to go in to the house. The house of all creativity. The house where the Father dwells in secret. This is the house. And that is how you're going to heal yourself. This is how you're going to get rid of all of the mental sickness and diseases that have been passed down to you. This is how you're going to break the spell. And you're going to take up your couch. And you're going to stand in wholesomeness. This is you taking authority. This is you holding yourself responsible for everything that's happening in your life. And you deciding to reprogram your subconscious mind. In other words, you decide to transform yourself by the renewing of your mind. That's why it is teaching you here. So the thing that you was denying and depending upon a, a crutch and sleeping on your greatness and pointing fingers and finding fault and looking in all the wrong places. When you look in the right place, you will realize it's only by the renewing of your mind you can transform your life. In verses 25, And immediately he rose up before them and took up that where whereupon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. You can only glorify God when you learn to think for yourself, when you look into your own house, when you realize that you, as I said before, that you are the cause of everything in your life and that the healer or the healing power is within you and you look within for cleansing. So my brother, my sisters, this whole Story is not a story of secular history. It is a story teaching you of the power that you have that you can use to achieve your every desire. That is your true Christ consciousness, your Christ power. So the key is you must accept that your real identity is your divinity and you cannot do it any other way but to look inwardly and realize that the Bible, as I said earlier, addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. And then you'd realize many people are seeing the Bible exoterically. That's why they're always looking outwardly and thinking it is secular history. But when you accept it esoterically, then you will understand it is, must be understood also metaphysically and be understood psychologically because it all addresses the human psyche. So use your mind to heal all of your conditions and your situations. And you will realize the very things that was keeping you down is the very things you're going to use now to uplift you. You would realize that everything was working together for your good. There's no accident or incident. Everything is a lesson to teach you of your greatness. So with that being said, my brother and my sister, I want to thank you very much for listening to me. I want to say to you, if this is the very first time that you listen to me, what I'm saying, if it makes sense, if it really resonates with you and you haven't subscribed already, I'm definitely encouraging you to subscribe, to like, to comment, and to share this video. Also, if you like to support our merch, the Inner Sun Science merch, the link is down below. And if you need to get my merchandise, like my books, uh, if you would like to do a one-on-one, -on -one, if you like coaching, to, to get coaching, if you want to do the Inner Sun Science course, or whatever you need, I'm encouraging you to follow your intuition and to check out all the links that are down below. All of the links are there to help you. 
So, with that being said, my brothers and my sisters, I just want to say peace. Love you all. Um, out. Oh.